Welcome to BCB Transport TV. We got Tim, Drive Safe Dave with us. Exciting. You know what? I, I'm pumped up today because we're moving into that holiday season, and I know that this is one of Tim's favorite times of the year, right? It is. It is. Yeah. You know, it's brutal right now. You think about from a planning, and, and I know all you know who Tim is, but um, from a planning and managing all of the freight that's going on, boy, it does. But there's got to be just struggles happening as as drivers, you know, they get sick. Uh, the trucks aren't running right now. Um, uh, oh, my arm is hurting. I can't shift right right now. I need an oil um, change. I need an oil change right now. And all of a sudden, the driver count goes from, you know, say 200 drivers running today to all of a sudden 176. And all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, how am I going to cover all this freight? Yeah, the hard part is uh, the drivers having the faith in you that you're going to send them out. But right. you're going to get them back. So it's uh, logistically, it's a challenge. But. So let's talk about that because, Dave, you've been with the company a long time, Tim, as well. I mean, when you think about this, you know, if you're first, if this is your first or maybe second year at BCB Transport, you don't quite yet trust you yet. I, I know you're saying it. And, Tim, you're saying oh, yeah, all you'll the be right back. Things. You'll be back yeah. plenty of time. You'll be back. You're going to get unloaded. They're going to be there. They're waiting on you. So when you get there, it'll be so fast. Oh, you'll turn around. It's just going to be mind-boggling. And then you'll be home what by? Oh, yeah. You'll be home a day early. You'll be yeah, home yeah. a day early. What, what else day can I do? early. And that was, and, and you know, we so we say that, and you've heard that. So maybe at your other company, you're like, I, I'm just not ready to trust you yet. And, and Tim, let's talk about that first. Uh, when you when you when you're playing somebody in around the holiday, I mean, are you, you're real. Are you really? Are you honestly trying to make sure they get back home, or is 100%. that just words you're saying? No, one hundred percent. I I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I knew that a driver was out there not getting home to their grandkids for Christmas. So. Um, like I said, it's just having faith in us to make sure that we get them back. And, you know, I know in the past that we've uh, we've run into some issues and we've actually flown guys home. So I won't leave Thursday until I know every driver is going to get home. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's such an important thing. I want you to hear that because there are things that, uh, that are unfortunate, right? And what I'm going to say about that, Dave, would be, and Tim, would be when you plan somebody, and it can be the best plan in the world. It really can and then all of a sudden the shipper doesn't show or the receiver doesn't show up, the shipper at the other place doesn't show up, and God forbid weather hits. Weather, yeah. And there's nothing you can do about that. Um, you know, we talked about the efforts you go in into making sure they get home, but talk to me about this. So, I mean, now you got them out there on the road and weather hits. I mean, does that ruin your holiday? Because now yeah. they're stuck. They really are. 100%. 100%. It's, it's not a good feeling, especially if you have a... a relationship that we have with some of these drivers and, and on that personal level. But uh, like I said, if we know there's weather in an area, then we're going to steer clear of it for the most part. But it's, it's a struggle sometimes. It is a struggle. And, and, and when Tim's telling you this, and, and Dave, you can, you, can, uh, you can back that up from a driver, um, from, a, uh, from a planner, from an, an operations. And let's face it, he's been in every position. And, and if, if we can create another one, he'll probably be in that position. Yeah. Um, but once, as, you, once you master, you master, you just master each one. And then pretty soon you just become the master of all the Jedi, the uh, Jedi of every position. But, but you know what? But we get I, them I, home, right? We do get them home. And, and I'll tell you over the years, it, it is without question. One of the main priorities, main focus is always focus on the driver and, and getting drivers home. We, we, we take a genuine priority on Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. Those are two times of the year that we don't play around. We don't mess around. We don't mess around with the drivers' lives. That we don't mess around with their home time, and we sure don't mess around with their ability to spend these special moments away from that. I mean, what were those two holidays? The uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And, and for sure, I thought you said New Year's. I'm like, well, hold on, no. we got we got a conflict no, no, here. No, 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 just not that important of a holiday to me. Not in trucking, it uh, yeah. never has been, and every driver out there knows that. But Christmas that. and Thanksgiving, these are family holidays. Absolutely. And and, and let's go back to two years ago, because Tim, you were here when we encouraged the drivers, and Dave, you as well, to not go home. And, and that was tough. I mean, well, I remember being on the show, doing the show, and asking them to not go home. And, and boy, that to my heart, that hurt me because here they are. You know, they haven't, many of them had, had stayed out extended anyway because of COVID, right? And now because of these bubbles and we didn't want them to get out and get sick, we didn't want them to, 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 to do that. We we asked them don't go home and 
And that was hard, wasn't it? Yeah. And kind of along the same lines today, I actually heard a driver send a message in saying he can't afford to go home. So that really hurts me because it's, what have we not been doing right up until this point? So I encourage drivers, just always speak up. If, if you're not getting your miles, make sure we know about it. It does no good to sit there and keep it to yourself. Yeah. And, and, and when it comes around these holidays, and, and so we think about a Saturday holiday. So Christmas, New Year, back-to-back holidays on a Saturday. That means most of the shippers are going to be closed on Friday, right? I believe it's a Friday this year. Everybody, eat Christmas Eve will be, that's the, that's the, that's the known holiday. Um, it becomes a struggle, a challenge. We ask that you do this, that, that you may send a message in, but you get on the phone and talk to your DM um, about, hey, I'm ready to run, and can you get creative? And, and we want to make sure that you know this, is that around the holiday, you may have to get creative, which means you may have to go to Jersey to, to, uh, to the drop yard or, or drop and hook or something like that. You may have to uh, go to Denver, come back, and do a lot of drops at yards or meet people to maximize these weird hours. You might have to go to Temple four times in a day. There you go. <laughs> you may have, yeah. <laughs> you got to get creative. We want to make sure you open your minds and your hearts to that part right there because creativity around any time, but especially around holidays, that's how you know you can benefit yourself. And the company. Yeah, you got you got some choices, and and also there's going to be some weird requests too. Now, when we talk about it, you may you may be going, hey, so you want me to go deadhead? How far? Exactly. Yeah, you, yes. Excuse me. I want you to ask the question though. <laughs> if they do tell you, it just doesn't. If it seems weird, definitely ask again. Uh, but 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 it's not uncommon to do something like that when we're trying to make sure and we're maximizing the uh, the availability to get customers picked up delivered and done around these weird days that we've got. Yeah, so Tim, talk about that for a second. Just try to think for a second around a holiday, what's the craziest deadhead you've ever done? Man, I don't know. Probably 600 miles. Denver to El Paso or something. Yeah, oh, I, I think I think we I think we've done we've actually brought somebody all the way out of uh, all the way out of the northeast all the way back to Dallas. Yeah. Deadheaded uh, yeah. without question, um, and we've done it several times. It's not Denver back to Dallas. Denver back to Denver Dallas. To, uh, yeah. You know what? Hey, you're in Denver. We want you to deadhead over to Indianapolis. <laughs> Be there Monday to pick this load up to come to Dallas. You're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I don't like dragging an tr- empty trailer t- uh, two thousand oh, miles because not only does it doesn't pay is it doesn't pay. But it's not good on the tires on a yeah. empty. People say, well, it's not a I said, yeah, but that trailer's doing Bouncing this the around. whole time back there. But but yeah, there's there's gonna be some different ideas, different ways to make things happen. But that's the that's the great thing about being creative and making sure that we have an opportunity to work you if you wanna work. Look, you, you have a chance, the holidays, you may wanna not be home. I'll tell you what, personally, I've got family coming in, not too excited about some of it. I mean, uh, but but I will tell you that you do have an opportunity to get back out there and work through the holidays if you want to, right, Tim? Oh, there are opportunities, right? We have freight that yeah. can be moved. Raise your hand. Raise Say your hand. Say something. Talk. You know, don't accept the answer. You know, and 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 if you're in that dispatch office right now and you're a driver, you've got to ask as well. Don't just send an email. You get up and you ask the planner. And if you Kike or Chris says, I don't think so. Come in here and talk to this guy right here. Right. Hey, dude, I, my guy needs more miles. You know, I got Donna. She wants to run. She's not ready to go. Can you do something? Yeah. And I think you or, can. Or yeah. come out a little yes. early, right? Come out yeah, a little especially early. Especially with the back-to-back holidays, I would say, if, if normally you would come out Monday, I would say come out Sunday because next week's going to be short again. Uh-huh. We're going to have to get creative again next creativity, week. Creativity. I'm telling you, longer lengths of haul. You know, um, and sometimes creativity means that you just leave and you get to where you're going. Let's just say you're going to Jersey. Let's use that as again. You get there on a Saturday, and I know it sucks, but you know what you can do? If you run your hours all the way out, you can take your 34-hour break, be ready to go perhaps late Sunday, early Monday morning to grab that preloaded trailer and get going. So ask ahead to, hey, what can I do when I get up there? Don't stop at your current dispatch. Go to the next one. Hey, when will I pick up? Because that matters when you take your break. Um, you know, so think about that and also get creative in, 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 around the holidays, around family that you may have in route. You yeah, know, it, use it, that as an opportunity to go see somebody you haven't seen in years. Yeah, and, and you know what? You have a chance here uh, as, we, as we have a weird week, um, the next couple of weeks actually, you have a chance to look at your miles that you're intending on and making sure 
that you're, there's no surprises, right? Because what we want, we want you to realize how you're planned out in your miles. And if you know what, if that miles needs to be a little bit more or what have you, and you want to run a little bit further, let somebody know, right? Because mm -hmm. it is a weird week. There's a lot of people that want to be home. We and we we want to get everybody that wants to be home. But but you know what? If if normally you you know you look at it, you say, well, I'm I'm out running, but I'm only looking at about sixteen hundred miles. Maybe there's another opportunity there that I can extend that to the twenty one or the twenty six or what have you. So look at what you're intended on and the miles that you're at, and, and kind of get an idea of where you want to be and. And you know what? This is a great opportunity for both you and your dispatcher to come together and plan your next solid two weeks out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a good, hey, you know what? I'm going to be ready to go Sunday morning. I know I normally come out Sunday night, but Sunday morning, I'm going to be ready to roll because I know it's a short week next exactly. week. Exactly. It's a short week, and, it, and it's a short week this week. So what that means to you and every driver out there as you go forward you're realizing, you know what, that pay is going to be down because I, I get paid by the mile, but get your weeks in, get your miles in, and understand that, yeah, you may have to do something a little bit different, but you want to get it done, and, but work with your dispatcher, get with your planner, and make sure it happens. Yeah, and drivers know the customers better than anyone, and, you know, they, they bring up ideas all the time. Can I do this? Can I do that? We actually have Alex Jones going to see his grandparents in Iowa, or his parents, sorry, in Iowa, on one of our loads, so... Our freight just gives so many opportunities to do different yeah, things. And we don't even charge you for that, right? No, I mean, we that's should. That's just another yeah. benefit from here at BCB Transport. We'll put you on a load, buy your family's house. Producer, you got a caller for us? Well, I was just going to say, uh, on the subject of deadheading, um, Justin Hayes said that Jen and he and Jen actually did Elk Ridge, uh, Maryland, all the way to Fort Worth that's what one yeah. time. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know what? Those... Well, we don't. We don't. That was only because we like Jen, though. We yeah. Needed, you know, yeah, we needed. Her family we wanted to see her, <laughs> and maybe Justin's family wanted to see her. They didn't want to see Justin. Can no. you can you leave him behind? You know, probably. But hey, Justin, we appreciate. We that. need the other team member in the truck <laughs> to keep the truck rolling. I mean, you know what? That uh, it's that uh, weak. Uh, it's that uh, weak weak link, right? Is that what we call that? We all have. Well, there's one in every family. It's not just you, Justin. Hey, we're gonna be back in about sixty seconds with more BCB Transport TV. Coming to you live out of Mansfield. Hey, welcome back to BCB Transport TV. Um, you know, love to, glad that we get the opportunity to be here. You know, drive safe. I know, you know, we do that morning show, but, you know, while we continue to work with everybody in here, it's cool, Tim, to, to have this show going. It's great to have you on it. You know, front and center, too. Yeah, I don't have the experience y'all have. I'm still trying to get there, but maybe I'll get enough chances to come in. You know what, you got to, you got to, you know, I'm going to tell you. It's a planning gotta, segment. <laughs> I'm just going to say this right here. When it comes to being on this TV, you got to take your, your pride and you got to, you got to take that man card yeah. and you got to put it aside for a second and, and you know, you just got to let it out. You got to, you got to be some, vulnerable. Than others. Yeah. You got to be vulnerable. Producer, what do you got? Yeah, we got Donna Casen on the line. What do you got? Good Donna. Morning, Donna. Hey, good morning. I just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. Oh, and yes, I'm staying out. I'm running Look at you. Uh, if, as long as my uh, hours will allow me. You know, I don't know if I can run off my recap or not, if I'm picking up anything. But yeah, I'm I'm staying out. Well, don't we but, have two uh, electronic logbooks in that? No, in that no. Truck? But I'll tell you what, Donna. The great news yeah, is, though, I, the great I thing is to. that after just 34 <laughs> hours, you get a whole new 70. So that yes. you got an opportunity <laughs> to extend that weekend, that holiday, and exactly. that those miles out if you do it just right. Exactly. But uh, thank you, Tim, for for uh, being on the show. It, it's a uh, I'm, I'm just thankful for you. I'm thankful for all of you guys. I, I'm truly blessed, and I couldn't ask for a better company. Thank you for keeping us safe. Thank you for keeping us rolling, and thank you for listening to us and letting us be us. You know, that's so important to me. I would never, ever go with another freight company. BCB is my family. BCB is my home. God bless all you guys, and uh, you all stay safe out there. Merry Christmas Thank to you, Miss Donna. Donna. Thank you so, so much. And we know you're talking to two out of three of us in this room, and we're <laughs> thankful for that part right there. Producer, who do you got? Yeah, we also got Lonnie Payne. What's going on today? LP, what's Lonnie. happening, sir? Good morning, everybody. How are you? What's going on, Lonnie? What's up, brother? Highly blessed and uh, something Highly else. Favored. Favored. Highly favored. Highly favored right? and <laughs> overly blessed. There you go. Truly blessed and highly favored. <laughs> 
Hey, I just wanted to give a shout out to old Tim, my buddy. I don't get to see you as much uh, anymore, but I just wanted to say thank you to you and your whole group back there, man, for all y'all do for us. And not only on the holidays, but every day, because I know how hard you guys work for us. And and a shout out to Scott and his group, my DM, Tanisha, all, all you guys. I appreciate everything you do. And uh, Rick and Brian for, you know, everything you guys do for us to, to uh, not only provide us with the best of the best, but you know, keeping that safety first and foremost, it's sure. just uh, a great place to be. And I'm proud to be a part of it. I love y'all. Hashtag family. Shout All out right. to old Larry Graham. Too. We love you, brother. Yes, sir. Larry, you know, we love you, brother, for certain on that. Tim, talk to me for a minute. You know, so Lonnie says, brings up a good point there that, you know, he doesn't get to see you as much. For those of you that don't know, this guy's a suit now. He's he's out there in his suit most of the time doing high-level things. Hey, Tim, that. what's up? Talk to me if you've moved up in the company now, running that division over there. What what's what's what are you what are you, I guess what are your thoughts about that? Uh, I love it. I mean, I've always tried to be better at everything I do, and I think just from where I started with the company as a driver and to be in the position I am now, that such a different perspective I give to y'all ownership, my managers, whatever it might be, but it's just just the balance of the ebb and flow of trucking and, you know, there's going to be good days, there's going to be bad days, but at the end of the day, if somebody comes in there and calls my extension and says, hey, coming out to the kitchen, talk to me, I'm going to go out there and talk to them, and it's just, it's just the, the relationship to be able to have that with the drivers means more than anything. That's awesome. Hey, producer, give me another caller out there. Yeah, we got uh, David Mason and then Bill Crudel after that. What do you got? What's going us, on, Mr. Mason? So, uh, good morning. Uh, I just wanted to, to let anybody know that might be new to the company. I'm I'm pretty new myself. I've been here about ten months, but uh, the C, you know, and BCB. It, it, I want to reiterate what you guys were talking about: communicate, communicate, communicate. I've met Tim a couple of times there at the yard. Uh, I kind of was hired on a dedicate ish rest. <laughs> uh, but when it's not available, Tim and my my fleet manager, my, my DM, they, they keep me uh, going with my miles. They get me home when I need to be home. Uh, it's only taken a few months to, to trust these guys, in my opinion. I just wanted awesome. to add that in there and just reiterate the communicate part. Hey, I appreciate, appreciate that, it, David. Uh, good, you know, great words. Yeah, I saw David in here. The other day, and that's what I asked him. So, what are you doing here? I, thought, I didn't think you're supposed. To, I thought the day you're in orientation was the last day I'd ever see you because you're running dedicated somewhere else. And it's I like guess creativity. Yeah, that's a that creativity, and that's where that ish came from. I love that dedicated it ish. ish. You know for sure. Hey, Bill. Good morning to you. How you doing? Just the TikTok famous. Hey, Christian Doll. Yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all have managed to keep you know, six months now with the company. Uh, uh, I'd known this 32 years ago when I was flatbedding. <laughs> I wouldn't have pulled no flatbed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, my, I get to see my son once a year. He goes off to school and and uh, to a Christian school, and I, this is the time I get to see him. So I take an extra day just to spend with him because he's like 12 hours from me and uh which like i say uh that's my time for him and because i don't get to do it all year long but i really appreciate y'all um uh all the patients everybody's giving me my dispatcher brandy she's wonderful uh I, i'm so proud to be here all right well thank you thank i know brandy's listening she'd say the same thing brandy just uh you know uh you know, boy, let me tell you, if you're on her fleet, there's a, there's like, it's like a, it's almost a cultish. I mean, they <laughs> follow her no matter what. Yeah. They will go into battle with her all day long on that. Hey, I do want to take a moment to remind everybody out there that there's a driver survey that, that's gone out. And, and that's not from us in here saying, you know, you know, which uh, person do you like better on the show? This is a, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a long survey and it requires a long time dedication for you to fill out. It's a carrier's edge. It's the uh, it's the it's to get the top company in in transportation that award right there. So it's very important to us. We just hit our minimum. So I want to thank each and every one of you for filling that out. But if you if you have received it, hey, fill it out. You know, even though if you haven't filled out yet, hey, take the time to fill it out. 
Because what we like about this, and I tell you what I love about these, is this thing is in depth. It goes into a lot of things. It points to areas that we've got to improve on. Yep. Um, and, and that's where I love this thing. I love being part of this. Um, last year, we, you know, it was our first year in it. We got accepted, and then we filled out the things. We didn't make it to the next level, but that's okay. You know, this year, hopefully we do. But when we get these things, we look at them. It tells us items that we as a company have to work on, the communication piece, right? You heard that from, yep. from Mr. Mason, just kind of reiterating that C. And that is something that we continue to talk about, we continue to work on. Tim, that communication, and let's just, so before I go to this, if you check your email. Um, we'll send it out again. I'm going to ask Shelly and HR, hey, send that out one more time. If you haven't filled it out, I'm going to ask you to fill it out. Let's get 200 of them, of them filled out so it makes us better once again. Tim, about communication, though, we, we hear it from drivers. Um, we see it inside the office. I mean, what, I mean, what can we do, really, to, to, to tackle the communication? It's not that we do it with that intent to not communicate. Right. I just think sometimes we just forget to communicate, maybe? Take things for granted, assume things are okay, assume everything's butterflies and rainbows yeah. and everybody's getting their miles. But like I said, if, if, if we don't hear it, then we can't fix it. Even though it's not good for us to hear sometimes, or I don't want to hear that we're not doing good, if you bring it up and it gives us an opportunity to fix it and make things right. Dave, what about you? I, I truly believe that communication is is more, it's a practiced art. You got to you gotta continue to practice at it every day. You got to continue to work at it every day. And and you know what? You may not have done a great job at it yesterday, but you know what? You have a chance to do better at it today and in, in, in talking and finding out what's going on. And sometimes you have to ask the tough questions, right? Sometimes you have to ask what what is wrong. Sometimes because you know what? You can hear it sometimes in the right voice and sometimes the way somebody's saying something or they're acting a little bit different. You know, you've you got to reach out and you got to communicate. You know what? We're people, right? Mm -hmm. And people are important. And that's how you develop relationships. And I think it's necessary. To, it's a practice start. and You got to continue to practice at it every day. Yeah. And it, and it really is. And to you, the, you know, a driver, a dispatcher, whatever your role is within this company, you can never really over communicate. And I stress that too, is that you know, and it can't be why I sent the message to the driver. You have to pick up the phone and call, <laughs> yeah. right? You 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 want to hear <laughs> what's on you. the other side. Yeah, you want to <laughs> make sure you communicate and over communicate that part. So um, so we're all on the same page. I, I want to talk about this. What time do we bring Buckle Up Bob in? Gotcha. So eight fifty. We have a few minutes on this. Um, one of the things that I really want to work on for next year, and I want to get your opinions on it, is you know we spoke about this on the show before about. How every one of your trucks out there, it really it's like a, its own 7-Eleven. It's like its own franchise. You know, we depend on that truck to make money, to run safe, all of those things that go with it, right? It's you're it's like you're the the franchisee of that store and, and it's a BCB transport. All these trucks are BCB transport stores. What would it be like if somehow we created some kind of scorecard that to let you know how your stores do it? Yeah. Every one of yours. We, we do it by fleet manager today, right? We right. say, this is how the fleets are doing. But what if we took it to the next level that said, hey, this is how your store is doing. Your store is is um, wasting away X amount of fuel. Your store is uh, this much productive. Your store is uh, generating X amount of the budget that we asked for you to, you know, that we expected from your store. Could you, um, number one, would you like that? And number two, because the scary thing is we wouldn't want somebody to get their feelings hurt. We don't, but could could you, the driver, take that same information and work with Tim, you know, your planners, the, you know, the, the dispatchers, the driver manager with Scott, work together on improving that? You know, could you take that information and use it as a positive approach? Because boy, last thing I'd want to do is bring it up there and drive, well, I just suck, I'm out of here. That's not what we're after, no. right? There's different levels of success. One driver runs 700 miles a day and doesn't meet his, his profit margin or whatever, and another driver runs 400 and goes mm -hmm. above his pro yep. profit margin. It's just a different way to gauge it. Like you said, like different franchisee stores, yep. one in downtown Dallas and one in With, Weatherford. Yes, for sure, right? We're going to have different numbers. Yep, yeah. different numbers. And that's where I'm saying is that, man, what if we were able to tell you what you should be able to do? And it's, and it's comparing you to you, right? right? Not you to, to somebody else that's running, yeah, that's in downtown Dallas, you know? You're in Weatherford. This is just what we expect. This is what we need you to do. Could you take that? And I wouldn't put dollars on it, but 
I would put percentages. You know, yeah. this is what we. This is your percent. This is you're at eighty eight percent of your goal. Yeah, and, and you know what? I I truly believe that drivers have a direct. I mean, a direct um, ability to change their overall productivity in that tractor, and it and it comes to not only the utilization of hours of service, the utilization of maybe learning how to split your log, maybe learning how to do different things and being a little bit more creative on what you do, idle times and, and things like that in which you can find better ways to improve your own scorecard and create better productivity for yourself and better productivity for the tractor. And, and you know what? It benefits everybody in the long run. But the one piece that I, and so I'll tell you my hesitancy is on that and why we did it. We, uh, you know, we put numbers out there and showed the top 20 drivers or whatever, top, drivers for idling or this and miles or whatever, is that I don't want it to be a reason to run illegal, right? right. And, and so that's my big struggle is, and I think as we continue to push the safety moment is number one, boy, the, you can't, I don't want you to go out there and, and because you're tired, you're worn out, try to get that truck an extra 100 miles this day. I want you to be safe. And, and that's the part there that becomes tricky. And what drivers don't see behind the scenes is, they don't know how big of a difference 30 miles more a day matters in the big picture. Just that little more that you can do, maybe go to the next truck stop down, but in the big picture, it all adds up. Yes, and, th and 30 miles a day is big. I mean, you take that times 200 trucks running a day, that's a lot of miles. That's a lot of revenue. It starts generating, and, and there are ways together that you know we can do it more safe. We can do it as safe. Um, that may mean that, that, that Tim, that, that there's a spot 80 miles up the road that we can get to, but it but we need to go ahead and call up there and reserve the parking. Yep. I'm going to say reserve the parking. All day. If you can get that extra 80 miles by reserving that spot for that extra, so you know that you can get there, it's well worth it. I mean, it just is. So there's things that we can work on together, and I want to find that. I want to really work towards that for 2022. You know, we share a lot of information. We share a lot of numbers. Um, these scorecards. So, you know, we are going to be changing our electronic logs. We're going to be going with the, you know, with a different camera, um, which is going to give you a scorecard as a driver. And I love that because it's, it's, it's just telling you what you're doing. Right. It's tell, you know, you may not like it. It's only forward facing like you have today, but either you were speeding or you weren't. Either you ran that stop sign or you didn't. You may not like the results, but if you ran the stop sign, it's going to ding you. But it also gives you credit for things you're doing right. And, you know, for driving within the speed zone, it gives you points for that. It's a pretty cool thing. And that's, to me, one of the first steps that we're going to do next year to make sure that we are, we're, we're giving you that ability to see, hey, how are you doing from a safety perspective first? You know, because we want you to be safe out there. And, you know, are you running lights? Are you running, you know, and, and my favorite one, is that, you know what, those yellow lights you run today? Let's just go a red light. You can run a red light today and get away with it as long as you don't put the brakes on. If you don't hard brake or don't hit the emergency key, nobody's ever going to know. Right. And that's not right. Yeah, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you what one of the nicest things, one of the greatest things, one of the most, most fascinating things is through the years and over time that we have we have truly become a much better company as far as safety for sure. in, in the mindset and, and you know sure. what great it's, job it, and you know what it, it's it's evident in the way you're driving it's evident in the way your mindset is out there it's evident in the what you believe and you know what as long as we can continue that and build on that and create a much better environment for us it's going to draw people in and it's going to make a genuine difference. It's not going to draw the right people. Yeah, in, right? absolutely. Maybe not That's, everybody. And you know what? It takes a little bit. Um, it takes a little bit of a learning curve, right? I mean, a lot of people, and I, I'm sure a lot of you uh, out there will testify that you know what's kind of grown on you this this idea, and it's kind of this passion has come full circle, and and you you have changed the way you see the road. You have changed. Well, the right what here, you so Tim. Do, I mean, do you plan? Differently with that, with this, than you say did three years ago as a with with the safety mindset. Oh, 100 percent. And it's like in any company, they go to ongoing training events and this and that. It's just keep it in the forefront of your mind of always, always trying to be the best. And it's constructive criticism. It's not to make anybody bad. It's ongoing training. I mean, think about when we first went electronic logs. 
you know, that part there, man. Oh, we would oh, get yeah. mad when you overslept 15 minutes. I oh, mean, yeah. my God, I mean, what's he doing? He's been down for 10. <laughs> you got a 10-hour break. It's 10, 15. It's been 15 minutes past. He hadn't moved yet. Right. I planned on him moving. We have grown from that, right, to, oh, yeah. to not, not even getting it. mad. How did you exactly, not right? make it? What's what? wrong with you? You suck. What? Yeah. <laughs> hey, producer, who do we have? Yeah, so we got a couple things here. Uh, so Justin Hayes asked, um, is this scorecard going to affect the safety bonus? And uh, are habitual offenders going to be talked to about that? And then yeah. after that, we got David Mace with his hand up. Gotcha. So so to answer that question, it's not going to go into the safety bonus today. That's not what it's for. But I bet you will use it to, uh, you know, for the next incentive, right? You Right now, you have two incentives. You have the quarterly safety bonus. And then you have the bonus that just says, hey, watch the damn show for eight times and we'll pay you money. <laughs> and I say, who doesn't watch that show eight times? You know, it's you get like three cents a mile to watch it. Even if your grandma watches it, your mom watches it, your kid watches it, somebody should log in and watch that thing eight times under your name because shame on you because you know what? I'll make them a safer driver, too. Yeah, you know, I'm okay with it. You know, I, I'll tell you what. I, I tell this to everybody that I meet. I, I, I have a great passion about this, and I believe this wholeheartedly. You know, there are companies out there that I've worked for, companies that I know of, and companies that are out there today that are incentivizing drivers based upon the number of miles they run, based upon the number of uh, distance that they go or how long they stay out. Not every company and, does that, right? But, no, not every company. But there are companies that do that. But, but you know what? It, I think that also sends the wrong message. I, 100%. I, I'll tell you right now, the reason I get excited when I talk to people and drivers and stuff like that is that I truly believe this is totally different. BCB believes in safety, and they incentivize by safety. Not they, on being on time. Not a, no. Yeah, right? No, they don't, they don't incentivize by being on time. They don't incentivize by the number of miles well, you well, run. Well, hold on. But why don't, why, Tim, I'll ask you that question. Why don't we incentivize by being on time? There's too many variables, whether it's, you know, you, you wake up, you're sick. It, it happens here in the office. We're all people. We know drivers aren't robots. There's just too many variables that play into being on time. And I also, I also believe that if you incentivize by being on time, you're making an allowance for not being safe. Yes, yep. sir. You want 100%. And I, I'll talk to any company that has too. that down there. Me I too. disagree with I the way challenge. you do that. Hey, David Mason, we see your hand up. Are you giving me a high five? Is that what you're doing? Well, I can do that. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, add in with the scorecard on these Tuesdays and Thursday shows. We can, we can, uh, we can have shows that that teach uh, more efficient trip planning. There you go. Uh, one Good of my idea. big things is to get home every weekend. So I, but I still on the days I run, I get twenty eight hundred to three thousand miles in between four and five days every week, and well. 99% of the time, but uh, I use the, the trucker path and the, the, the driver tech uh, GPS, and I use Google Map GPS, and I use multiple things. I use a, a road atlas. I use the weather channel. I use all of it. Uh, when I get a new trip, I mean, I'll sit there and plan it down to the T, and where, where I'm going to plan on making it where my backup is in case I run into a, a backup, whether where another backup is in case there's another traffic jam, another backup. And so as I can watch my clock and, you know, I know uh, in general, and Bob talks about leaving an hour to try and find places. I usually take my clock down to 15 minutes every day that I drive. Wow. But I don't do it with going into that truck stop like, oh, oh, it's time to stop. Like, I know. I, I watch my clock and go, okay, this is my backup. I've got time to make it to the next place. Okay, this is the second backup. I can make it to my final place. And if I can't, I stop early. And even when I stop early, my clock is still low because I run into problems. But we can teach different technologies and different techniques to, to plan trips like that so Great that everyone points. can learn how to do it. Great points, David, and we appreciate your comments on that. And he said one thing in there I just didn't hear me, road atlas. What, what is that? You know? <laughs> that's, that's old school. That's how we, <laughs> talk. That's how we used old to get school. around. That's how we used to. And, by the way, that's where all the information that you yeah, need. It is. Mapsco. What's a yeah. Mapsco? You know, all of those weird Local terms driver. like that, right? And, and so if you didn't know that, David Mason actually lived across the street from me in Panama. Oh, wow. Yeah, across the street, went to the same church, uh, 
Balboa Church of Christ in uh, wow. in Panama Canal. So lived across the street. So hey, David, great point, great job on that. Uh, it is time for a little bit of safety with Buckle Up, Bob.